Background processing is one of the most important concepts for building good products, but not for the reason that you might think. I have a next application here where users can leave comments. And whenever we store a new comment, there are some additional things that need to happen. We need to check the comment for mentions and send the appropriate notifications. We need to create an activity record, and maybe we need to update our search indexes. The point is we have a primary action and then we have our secondary actions. And these additional actions should be processed outside of this request. So there are a few reasons for this. First is that we don't wanna make the user wait, but we're using React, we can do optimistic updates. That's not really a problem here. Much more importantly is the reliability for our application. So what happens when this first action fails? Well, it's gonna cause the subsequent actions to fail and we don't have a way to retry it or to retry the task that didn't run at all. So we need a better system than this. We need a system that keeps track of these actions, can understand their status, runs them in isolation, retries them when they fail and gives us visibility into what's happening and control over how to respond when things go wrong. But this is where we run into our first problem. In order to run a system like that, you need a server. You need a long running process. We're serverless, we're on Vercel, and we don't have access to that. You can, of course, spin up a queue server and share your worker logic or use some cloud primitives like SQS. But either way, you're gonna have to manage additional resources, whether it's new infrastructure or new code. There is a better way, a way that allows you to use your existing route handlers, and gives you the visibility, the reliability, and the control that we talked about. And that better way is Upstash QStash. Now, you might already be familiar with Upstash. They have a very popular Redis solution that Vercel actually uses under the hood for their KV service. So they're pretty well known and they are very reliable. And it works by sending requests to your existing route handlers with the data that you provide. So by sending messages back and forth, you effectively decouple the secondary action from the original request, the primary action. So let's take a look at the way that this works in practice. Let's say that we need to send those notifications after a comment was created. Step one is that we send the request to QStash with two important things. The URL of the route handler, which we'll look at in a second, and the data that they should send in their request. Step two, we create that endpoint, which is a public webhook, so we need to verify the signature. And then we just add the logic to send the notifications. So now, whenever we call this, for example, if we go back to our primary action, it's going to send a request to QStash and continue processing the other actions. Then QStash is going to send the request to our API with the same payload. So this is great. This is exactly what we wanted. We now have a way to manage these tasks outside of the original request and in a way that is much more resilient. But there is another problem, at least for me, and that is the developer experience around creating and managing these jobs. And there are two issues that I have with the way that things work right now. First, whenever we create a new background job, we have to create a new route handler. Most of the code is the same with the only difference being the job logic. So there's no reason why we can't have a single handler that processes requests for multiple jobs. Next, the calling code for triggering a job is completely disconnected from the job logic itself. When I click into this function, I have no idea what this does. And if I wanna make changes, I first have to understand the way the system works. And then I have to know that it uses this endpoint. Then I have to locate that endpoint just to see the logic. So there are a few different solutions to this, but the one that I prefer is to treat your jobs as first class objects throughout your code base. So these are objects that encapsulate the handler logic. They can be passed around and directly dispatched when you want to run them in the background. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's go back to the send notifications example, but this time we're going to create a new job using a factory function. This function accepts a unique job key so that we can identify it later. It accepts the payload that we type ourselves with whatever data we need, and it accepts a callback that executes our job logic directly. All of these things are co-located and the job itself is easy to pass around. When it's time to run this job, we have a couple of options. We can call the handler directly, but we can also dispatch the job and run it in the background. We can add a delay or specify the retries, 
The point is we now have a single object that represents our job instead of two different files like we had before. Let's take a look at the factory function create job. If we first look at the types, we have our job, which again takes a unique ID and the handler. And the handler is just a function that accepts a single argument, which if you recall will be the request body. We then return the key and handler directly to satisfy our job type. And we add the dispatch method, which takes all the same option as the underlying client method, except we omit the body because we want to control those types with the payload. Lastly, we have a helper method down here, which builds our QStash request. The important bit is the URL, which is going to point to our route handler. Note that we have the query parameter, which is set to the job key so that we can resolve the job in our handler. Now let's take a quick look at the endpoint. So by now you've seen most of this before. The only difference is that we grab the job key and we use it to get the handler. We make this easy on ourselves by using a map of keys to functions. We start with an array of all jobs that we want to be able to process. We loop through them and we add them to the map. And that way it's real easy to grab a job handler by its key. Now that we have the handler, we simply execute it and return the response. So now let's see all of this in action and return to our example. So I have a job to parse dimensions and then to send the notifications both of which just log to the console. And let's test it out. Let's leave a new comment and see if these get processed in the background. Okay, so with these three things, uh, QStash, our factory function, and our dynamic route handler, we have everything that we need to reliably run jobs in the background and a really good developer experience built on top of it. I do have a couple of links in the description. One is the code on GitHub, which you can actually install this as a package if you want, or you can just copy and paste it. And then the other is a link to a blog article that I wrote that goes much deeper on this whole process. So thank you so much for watching. I really hope that you enjoyed this. Uh, this is in fact my first ever YouTube video. So it would mean the world to me if you would let me know how you think that I did, if there's anything that you think that I can improve. And if you want to see more videos like this, please subscribe. Thank you so much.